Welcome to the tutorial on navigating within the Brightmetrics Shortel Reporting Services. In this video, we'll go over the basics of navigating and using the reporting services. When you first log in, your menu choices in the left-hand navigation will be customized for your permission levels. This is where you can move around within the different functions of the service. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to spend our time in the dashboard area. You'll notice that the default home tab is always the one furthest to the left. This is the tab you'll always begin with. To learn how to change which tab this is, take a look at our Edit Dashboard tutorial. If you do not have Edit Dashboard permissions, you won't be able to change this. And you can work with your system admin to change which is your default home tab. Now that we're in the area that we need to be, we can condense the sidebar menu to gain access to that screen real estate. We can always bring that back by clicking on the navigation arrow. The tabs across the top are the different dashboards that you have access to. Selecting these will give you the charts underneath them. We'll work on this workgroup tab for the purposes of this tutorial. At this level, many of the charts are meant to be more about watching for trends and anomalies than picking out useful pieces of data. The first thing to notice is that mousing over any data point will show you the details on that data point. Mousing over a point on a timeline will show you the date, the chart item, and the value that point represents. Mousing over a bar chart item will show you the chart item and the value that bar represents. In order to take a close look at an individual value, we can deselect the other values on the chart. If, for example, we want to take a close look at abandoned calls for this workgroup to see if there's a trend we need to keep an eye on, we can deselect the other items on the chart to hide them temporarily, thus highlighting the abandoned calls. If we always just wanted to see abandoned call counts, we could change this chart or create a new chart only to show abandoned calls. See our tutorial on editing charts to learn more about this. If there's a busy area of a chart that you'd like to get more detail on, you can simply drag a box over the area for which you'd like to zoom. You can continue to zoom if you like, or click on Reset Zoom when you're done to return to the original view. To drill down further into the data, select the magnifying glass icon on the chart you'd like to examine. Note that this will open a new tab in your browser. By default, on a timeline chart, your drill down will be positioned on the last data point. For most charts, this will be data collected today. Let's first take a look at the layout of our table data. The default layout may not be the way you would want to see the data. In this case, it's not what I want to see, so we're going to take care of that right now. First, Rather than have the exit reason as your table rows and users as your table columns, I prefer to see those switched, especially because in a larger workgroup there may be quite a few agents and it would make the table very wide to see it like this. Changing this is really easy. We're simply going to drag the titles to where we want them. Dragging target name, which is the agent, to rows and exit reason to columns we'll put them in that location. For me, that's a much better way to view this data. I also want some additional pieces of information in this data. I want to know what the average duration of the call for each user is, so I can drag average call time down into our values. Note that I can change the order of the columns by where I drag them into the values. And for me, I also like to see the percent calls that are transferred, so I'm going to drag that on there as well. As a side note, transfer percentages are a great metric to track in a workgroup. If this is high across all the agents, it's an indication that there may be a call routing problem with calls ending up in this workgroup that should perhaps be going someplace else. If there's a small subset of agents that have a higher than normal transfer percentage, it's an indication there may be an opportunity for additional training for those agents. In either case, there's a potential to enhance customer satisfaction by solving the issue. Now that we have the table how we like it, 
we can select any data point on the chart to view the data from that time. Our next option is to filter results. Any dimension with this icon next to it can have a filter applied to it. If it has one, you'll see the icon change. In this example, the queue name has a filter applied to it by default because this chart is only for this one workgroup, so the queue name is filtered to only show us that workgroup. As an example, if we wanted to see only certain exit reasons, we can filter on that dimension. You can see here that we're showing forward always, reserved, and transfer to agent as exit reasons. These are short tail exit reasons and not something you set up. But reserved is one that's not used much and it's not very valuable to see on our chart, so we're going to filter that out. We do that by simply selecting the filter icon next to the exit reason. From here we want to check the items that we do want to see so it's easier to select them all and then uncheck the ones we don't care about. Then we select apply and now we see the reserved column is gone. One other thing to note is that you can sort on any of these column headers simply by clicking on them. If I want to sort by average call time, I can click on that header, once for high to low, and again for low to high. This makes it easy to see if there are outliers in your data. If one agent has a significantly higher or lower average call time, it may be something to look into. When everything is as you want to see it, you can come down and click the Save icon. That will save this layout exactly how you leave it, and when you come back to this chart, it will have the same layout. Note that this will also save any filters or sort columns you've defined. Similarly, selecting the print button will put the table as you have it in a format that will print. From here, you can use your browser's print functionality to print or save it as a PDF. And you can also export this data to a CSV which is a format to use if you want to import the data into a spreadsheet, such as Excel, for further examination. A few other things to mention about this view. The timeline here is important. If you want to see the table data for a time range rather than an individual data point, you can simply click on one of the ends of the timeline to show that. If you want to see the range for a smaller or larger time period, simply slide the ends to the right or left to represent that. Additionally, you have the option to see the chart hourly rather than daily, or in a bar chart format with these selections up here. If the charts are the macro view of your environment, then the table view begins to focus on a bit more detail. Once you've set up the view to line up with your goals of what you need to be tracking, you can move into even more micro detail levels. Our next level of detail takes us to the individual call level for the data we're looking at. We can see that on this day, this user took quite a few calls compared to other users, but the average call was very short, and he transferred almost 14% of those calls. Perhaps as a manager, you want to spot check what's happening here. Simply select the plus icon to drill down to the next level of detail. Based on this, the calls seem a little short, but nothing looks too odd here. But let's sort on the number of call handlers to see what's happening here. What we see is that of the three calls he transferred that day, two of them were transfers back into the same workgroup that he's a member of. This is interesting, and if that behavior isn't normal for the group, a manager might want to dig more deeply on that. In any case, if we want even more detail, our drill down would take us to the individual call level. And sure enough, drilling down with the icon to the left of any individual call will give us a complete graphical cradle-to-grave report on that call. The bars here represent the time spans and are color-coded to indicate the reason for the leg. Clicking on them gives us the drill down on that individual call leg. Dark blue, for example, is the originate call and represents the trunk line. The dark brown line represents the party that was called, and in this case the auto tenant was initially called, and the light brown line is there because of a transfer. So we can see that the path of this call was an inbound call on this PRI channel, which went directly to the auto attendant and was there for 48 seconds. From the auto attendant, the caller chose this work group, and the call was in the queue for that work group for 18 seconds. This agent then picked up that call 
and was on for approximately two minutes. He then transferred the call back into the same work group, and after three seconds in the queue, another agent picked up that call and was on it for two minutes before hanging up. You can see this is a great tool for spot checking or for drilling into customer service issues. When you've completed analyzing this data, closing these windows takes you back to your main set of dashboards. We hope this tutorial has given you the basic tools to navigate and use Brightmetrics Shortel reporting services.